up on this week's show. Host of New Zealand's top stars blow the whistle for the fight against violence. We get set for the new season and the new format of ITM Cup Rugby. And Marty Holler reunites with Waikato 12 years after making his debut. Yes, Kia, good evening and welcome on into Rugby Senate. Great to have your company once more. And we have a super crew joining us on the couch just for you and it's for a very special cause. So, let's introduce our guests. And they are joining us, Rugby League legend Ruben Wicke is here <laughs> alongside him. Of course, a good friend to the show here, Rugby Centre, former All Black flanker Josh Cronfeld. And next to me, a good mate of mine, a man who's won the Ramfrew Shield twice. Now get this playing for two different teams. Rua de Puki, congratulations. Welcome along, <coughs> gentlemen. Yep, the cause is called Blow the Whistle. It's a family violence campaign that uses sports language and well-known sports stars to galvanise people to get help if they need it. I'm part of the campaign, as are Ruben and Josh and a host of others. And first up, many of us have had an experience ourselves, so I guess um, the question would be to ask you all, and, and you, Ruben, first, why did you get involved with us? Yeah, it's uh, something that's been with me for a long time. I've witnessed my mum uh, through a few relationships uh, turning up in the morning with uh, sunglasses, so behind those sunglasses are a few black eyes. So hearing that in the next room with uh, two younger siblings is uh, not something you want to want to witness. So that's why I've uh, become you know one of these ambassadors for Blow the Whistle and also the New Zealand ambassador for White Ribbon. So I'm speaking out there and getting out there. So it's very important that you know people like us can help the cause and that people are familiar with. So. Very passionate about you know trying to change the mindset out there because mm. it's, it's still happening. It, you know, they always say the Maori and Polynesians, but yes, Europeans out there are doing the same thing. So hopefully we can touch them out there and change their way of thinking. Uh, Rua, can you tell us um, a little bit about your background? You've kind of had some experiences yourself. Oh yeah, I, I just um, oh, as far as the campaign goes, I was just asked and um, whether it'd be something that I'd, I'd be willing to support. And I, you know, it's a great co-popper and uh, sort of like Ruben. Um, I think probably everyone here, whether they're not or not, um, everyone in our communities is uh, affected by the issue, whether directly or indirectly in some capacity. So it's just awesome that um, people with profiles, you know, and just for Ruben, just to um, say that little bit on TV, it, you know, you've got to be brave. And um, I mm -hmm. think something which um, gives uh, you know, something bad like that power is, is the silence which, you know, and, and some people can be ashamed and, and it's that isolation, you know, that, which is the real killer. So, um, um, you know, people getting the message out there and um, more and more people will just know that they're not on their own and that a lot of people have been through it and, you know, that there are places to go to for help. Mm -hmm. Mark, you're fairly passionate about it. Uh, clearly, uh, uh, you know, ambassador like uh, Reuben and Josh and Rura, from a woman's point of view, I mean, why are you involved? Um, look, I don't actually usually get involved with campaigns, um, but this one was pretty important to me because I've never told my story, and um, I certainly will uh, when we launch this in about six weeks. But um, I was involved in a relationship that became violent uh, after I ended it, which um, often violence escalates when you end a relationship and it, it was it's a pretty terrible story but the reason I'm doing it is because I don't think people should be embarrassed especially women about mm. admitting that they've been involved in, mm. in um, a violent relationship or you know um, a domestic incident at home um, it's better to ring up and ask for help and um, turn to your mates or, or whatever so and Josh have you seen this or have you experienced it or um, just... look I've been around it you know at different times with friends and 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 you don't notice it it's it's, mm. it's a hidden thing and then all of a sudden it crops up but for me um, I guess why I got involved was I've come from a family that's that's always been together and loving and um, having a great time together. Don't get me wrong, we had we had arguments like most families, yeah. but um, we've always been there for each other. And I've just loved everything that ever happened in my family, which is just such. A, it's made me who I am, and 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 I treasure that fact. And I, I want to try and bring that into my family as much as I can. And so. If we can get the message out there so that families can enjoy what I had mm. in my childhood, um, wicked, wicked. And that's 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 probably why I'm involved, you know, because it's just something that's it's, it's there and we don't know it's there and it's under the surface. Mm. And if we can expose it and expose people 
um, with how to deal with these factors um, mm. and the reasoning and the whys and, and try and negate that stuff, we're just doing so much for New Zealand. Mm. So All Blacks Richard Kahui and Liam Meesom are also involved in a big way with this campaign but unfortunately couldn't join us in the studio because they're in Wellington at the All Blacks training camp. Uh, before they left though, Josh and Pete McGlashan managed to catch up with them. Hey Irish. G'day Crush. What's going on mate? Oh, not much mate, just trying to uh, finish a few odd jobs around the house. I'm, I'm moving and, and renovating all at the same time so I've got a week to get everything done so house is a bit of a bomb site and obviously I've got a few odd jobs. Well it won't bother you too long mate but I just wanted to find out what's going on with Blow the Whistle. Well it's uh, obviously a great cause. Uh, P-Mac talked to me, uh, Peter McGlashan talked to me last year about uh, coming in and, and giving a hand and you know family violence and, and keeping kids safe at home, something I'm pretty passionate about so uh, decided to jump on board and and you know, so, you know, so far so good. And so what's what's involved with it, mate? Oh, I suppose I could I could go and explain everything to you, but I think we've uh, probably got a better man for the job, and that is Pete McGlashan, the man that started it all. Uh, he's inside with Liam Messam, and hopefully they're uh, packing some boxes and we can get started. <laughs> oh, is that right? Good on you, mate. Got to have people around. Yeah. Liam? Pete. How's it going, mate? You all right? Just tell me, what is... Blow the Whistle. Blow the Whistle is a family violence campaign. It uses the language of sport and positive family images to really encourage people to ask for help if they're living um, with violence at home. <laughs> Who's involved, Rich? Can you, can you do it off the top of your head? Yeah, there's quite a few of us, obviously. Us three and there's Jenny May Coffin, uh, Mel Robinson, uh, Paul Finale, uh, Ruben Wiki. It's pretty cool meeting Re Ruben the other week. We were really lucky we got some amazing images from the photo shoot at Photosport. Uh, Andrew Corner and the team did an awesome job of getting us some cool shots of the guys which will go out as posters and coasters and billboards and banners all around the country. Hey, so Liam, uh, how did you get involved in Blow the Whistle? Yeah, well, uh, my good friend up here, Cux, uh, sort of talked to me at training about it and uh, I just think it's a great cause and uh, obviously it's my young fellow here, wanted, uh, wanted to get on board. So it's not the only charity you're involved with though, is it? No, I've got a, uh, a label called Native and it's uh, just a small little business just uh, doing t-shirts and uh, trying to sell those and all the money and proceeds go back to the, the youth here in Hamilton. So and also uh, just jumped on board a, uh, a stage of origin sort of, whose line is it anyway sort of stage thing. Check out my guns, check out my guns! <laughs> Hopefully our next uh, our show here in Hamilton will be uh, uh, going against uh, Blow the Whistle Against Violence. For you guys, is it quite an important thing for you to be doing your pit for charities? Oh, I, th I think this one in particular is, especially for me, oh, it's, it's something I'm, I'm really passionate about and I think uh, everyone should have the opportunity to grow up in a safe house and a safe environment and um, you know anything we can do here to, to help that, I think it's going to be really great. So um, I know a lot of boys are involved in different, different charities for different reasons and it's just, for me, this is something I'm really passionate about. So Pete, how big is Blow the Whistle going to be? Well, it's going to be huge. Um, towns and communities all around the country are going to be running their own events. We've got some Blow the Whistle whistles which are going to be given away. Uh, in 2007 they gave away about 5,000. I've just put in an order for 37,000 whistles. So they'll be going to rugby club coaches, um, netball coaches, soccer coaches, phys ed teachers and giving away at ITM Cup games all around the country. And I've also ordered 84,000 coasters uh, that'll be going into rugby clubs and bars and restaurants all around the place so it's going to be huge. Well it sounds like you're going to be busy and you guys have got a World Cup to win and some packing to do so I better get out of your hair. We've probably got a team to make first but uh, we can certainly start on the packing. Let's go. Yeah. Join me. Join me. Join me. Join me. And let's blow the whistle on violence. <laughs> Couldn't even blow the whistle, no, Josh. No, Goodness. No, no. It was pretty noisy, man. <laughs> and, and a few of the guys, I've got to say, Richard Kahui was the worst at um, reciting his lines to the camera. He had about 20 takes, so it was quite oh, amusing to watch. You're he's just that, the right? end of guy, Richard Kahui, you <laughs> know. Yeah. If it was a smooth, it was sort of some other line, Richard Kahui would nail it. But when it sort of has to be done... Um, with emotion, eh? Oh, I think like this. He, wants, he wants it to be. He's a perfectionist. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. No, you know, no, you've got to be look. truthful. Like, we just go, yeah, we've done that. That's yeah, perfect. Yeah. Well, he's not happy like that. Ruben, you guys had a story to tell about this 
Listen, Mel, you've had a story, very passionate about it. But I mean, how do you get approached to, to you know, be involved as, as an ambassador? I mean, you, you might be passionate about it, but there has to be an avenue yeah. to actually get well, involved. Well, I think um, Peter's good friends with Jenny May, and they do a lot of CrossFit sessions, and he put this little concept together, and, and he came to us and approached us, and I was all for it due yeah. to my involvement with White Ribbon, speaking out of uh, against violence towards you know, women and children. So it was just. Now, automatically, I just wanted to put my hand up for it, so that's why I got involved. I uh, just want to have a look at the um, poster campaign because there are some great shots here and obviously some great people involved. It's just not uh, rugby and league people. We've also uh, got a number of other people like Paul Hennedy in the background there and there's Peter McGlashan uh, at the front, Jenny May, of course. Um, and don't forget that it's all about this 0800 number, 0800 456 450, uh, where if there is an issue in your life, um, you can ring that and that pretty much gives you all the information Information, all the options um, of where to go, of what to do. And the other point about this uh, campaign, it's also about rugby clubs being kind of, I guess, a counselling service and that other people in like your rugby league or sports club are also monitoring it so that they can step in and help as well. That's my little boy Jensen there and he took a great shining to you, Ruben. That's been the hair. Oh, it's the hair. And, you know, um, Richard Kahui said to me that he was starstruck because of you. Did he actually talk to you in the end? No, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think he wanted he wanted me to get him some tickets to the Origin. All oh, right, that's what that's, what <laughs> so it was, that's probably why. <laughs> and, 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 are you? What are you doing in Gizzy? Because you are involved um, at ground level um, in Gisborne for this, aren't you? Yep. Yeah, um, um, I, I work for a few organisations, but uh, for for the Ngati Poro Runanga, I um, I'm running a mentoring program. So, you know, just just the nature of that work, um, some of the some of the home environments of some of the boys, you know. Um, I'm not saying that they're exposed to that sort of thing, but, you know, uh, some of the poorest areas in Gisborne and all, all those sort of problems that come with poverty. So I just thought, you know, it was just a natural follow-on when I was asked to be a part of this. Ruben, you play, we all play a violent sport, you know, rugby, rugby league, it's physical impact, that's what we want our guys to do when they go over that white chalk. So what's the message to those same players when they go back into the chain sheds afterwards and, and, and switch that brains off from the violence that we want. I mean, we've got some shots of you doing the lead in the haka for the, uh, for the Kiwis, and it's, it's about passion. Yeah, but, no, I mean, What's the message there? Well, I think playing a contact sport, you know, it's that controlled aggression when we go in over the white line and playing to the best of our ability, that's why we're being picked in the teams. But um, when you come off the line, you go back to being the dad and, and the husband that, that um, everyone's it's loved. Channeling, um, that excessive energy into yeah, other exactly. good things and exactly. that's the, sometimes the hard part but well, it's important to do. Well sport I guess in a lot Sports of our lives has been, too. it has because you grew up in Ōtara and that's yep. not you know an area that's easy to grow up in, I mm. mean there's plenty of gangs and stuff well, that's, like that. Well yeah, that's the once warriors uh, story they always talk about, so when I was in Canberra and I showed the Aussies the movie they called me Jake the Mush straight away <laughs> <laughs> and then I told them I said mate I cook my own eggs, I like them poached <laughs> <laughs> and my wife will never cook me eggs. But it was your mum that was the leading influence in you playing league wasn't, wasn't it? Yeah she was so I had a solo parent growing up, and uh, I was uh, growing up, I grew up on the Samoan values, you know, but the respect and humility. So I, I try to do that, do it to this day. And you know, she's been great, and what she's been through, it's uh, it's my time to give back to her, and um, you know, just get the message out there. It's not okay to. To do that. Well, I've got to say, with all you people involved, the other sports stars you have involved, getting out and saying your message, because what Rua said, very brave, I guess, for you, is to actually say the message, what you just said, the amount. I mean, encourage other people to do exactly the same. I wish you all the very, very best for it. I think it's so wonderful that you guys are all in behind it. Well done. Thanks, Carmo. OK, so back to rugby and the ITM Cup and its new format, which was officially launched on Monday this week. The competition gets underway next Thursday in Dunedin with Otago taking on North Harbour. I went along to the event, which was a bit of fun to watch because the 14 captains were given the challenge of building a bench. Sounds easy enough, but in reality it proved to be a lot hard work, a lot of hard work for some of them.